It's Tuesday the 12th of June 2018 and this is your EV News Daily. Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. In fact, wherever you're listening around the world, a very warm welcome from London in the UK. Here is today's news about electric cars and the future of transport. My name is Martin Lee and I go through every EV article online so you don't have to. Coming up on today's show, Germany discovers some potential defeat devices and what that could mean for EVs. More on Tesla's autopilot and this time AI. But we'll start today with Jaguar Land Rover making more room for electric retooling. Britain's biggest car manufacturer, uh, Jaguar Land Rover, owned by Tata Motors, is to transfer all of its production of its Land Rover Discovery model from its West Midlands plant here in the UK to Slovakia potentially putting hundreds of agency jobs at risk, reports the UK's Guardian. However, the move is seen as an opportunity to retool the plant to build the next wave of electric cars. The company said it would make an electric option for each of its new models after 2020. Now, David Bailey, the Professor of Industrial Strategy at Aston University, also in the West Midlands, said there's been speculation locally that they needed to free up some space to make electric vehicles. There was concern that their first First electric car, of course, that's the Jaguar I-Pace, which is currently being raved about online, uh, was being made in Austria. Uh, people wanted it built in the UK in the West Midlands. If this move on the Discovery means making more EVs in the UK, he says, overall, that's a good thing. We want to see that transition to a low-carbon economy in the UK and the Midlands, and that creates more jobs. Well, Daimler shares fell yesterday following a report in Germany that up to one million Daimler cars could contain their own form of what is commonly called a defeat device. Now, the chief exec, uh, Dieter Zetcher, uh, was prepared to meet the transport minister yesterday in Germany. Daimler declined to comment uh, as of when we recorded this podcast on the one million vehicles figure, but said it's uh, cooperating fully and transparently with the KBA and Germany's transport ministry, reports Autoblog. Daimler, like other car manufacturers, uses urea uh, urea nitrate liquids to neutralise nitrogen oxide emissions in exhaust fumes. However, Germany's road vehicle authority, the KBA, has taken issue with the emission control features amid suspicion they allow vehicles to emit excess pollution without detection. Uh, We'll bring you more on the story as it unfolds. Of course, innocent until proven guilty. Sometimes these reports can run away with themselves and Importantly, Daimler haven't responded to this yet, so we ret- we keep an open mind. Of course, all of this, which goes back to VW, who were using defeat devices, and there's no saying that Daimler are, is where some of the momentum for electric vehicles really came from. They were progressing until diesel gates with gradual sales, really driven by China and then Tesla as well. But since then, there's been a noticeable, a palpable shift in public opinion. And only sees over the weekend when you look at things like the fully charged live event, how many people were there who don't own EVs but want to? How many people have got an eye on moving to electric cars? And a lot of that is because they felt either lied to or cheated cheated to, uh, or the sheer environmental issue, which they weren't aware of, was just simply brought to their attention. Well, following up on the story that we talked about on yesterday's show about improved autopilot for Tesla, uh, Elon's been tweeting that with version 9, we will begin to enable full self-driving features. He says, a reminder that version 8 arrived in 2016, so this update is long awaited. Uh, Now, Anandra JK on Twitter... Ask this of Elon Musk. Speaking of merging the autopilot, the biggest issue I have noticed is when two lanes merge in rush hour traffic. The autopilot's not able to decide and let the car slightly ahead on the neighbouring lane go ahead and I invariably find myself concerned, says Anandra. Well, Elon Musk replied to that, that issue is better in the latest autopilot software rolling out now and fully fixed in August update as part of our long-awaited Tesla version 9. To date, autopilot resources have rightly focused entirely on safety. With V9, we will begin to enable full self-driving features. End quote. End tweet, if you like. Well, the name autopilot does suggest a certain something, and now Elon is tweeting about the phrase self-driving features. 
You and I probably know about the limitations of all of these systems, not just in Teslas, but I do have this nagging doubt, this nagging worry that when mainstream journalists, the press, and then in turn report re- report that to the majority of people using phrases like self-driving and autopilot, when things go wrong, they are setting themselves up. They open themselves up to criticism. Meanwhile, in a related story picked up by Fred Lambert, Electrek reports that Andre Karpathy, Tesla's director of AI and computer vision, is currently hard at work trying to improve autopilot by training Tesla's neural net with incredible amounts of data from Tesla's fleet. He describes how labelling different types of road lines can actually be really complex due to the variety of lanes across different regions. He gave another example of Tesla's data set with traffic lights, which he says can get get crazy really fast. Now, Kapathy explained that it takes time and attention to build a data set, and it's painful. That's the quote, painful, which is why they're trying to build new tools at Tesla to help them create software 2.0 code. So that is using AI and using uh, the computers to try and do some of the work. And it's lovely, isn't it, when you get to hear from people. I think it's lovely when you get to hear from people other than Elon Musk, because it's not a, it's not a one-man band. It's almost 40,000 people all working to the same vision. And of course, we want to hear from Elon, but we also want to hear from people like J.B. Straubel and Franz, uh, who looks after design, and now the head of AI. And uh, it's fascinating. Just, just the little quotes. It's just interesting to hear from. Well, staying with Tesla, and analysts at the investment bank Berenberg said that people tend to dwell on the competitive landscape for electric car maker Tesla, but underestimate the full extent of Tesla's technology advantage, according to proactive investors. Well, imminent competition from traditional OEMs, original equipment manufacturers, is often cited as a key threat to Tesla. But this underestimates the full extent of their technolo- uh, technology advantage, which manifests in the entire electronic architecture design, writes an analyst for Berenberg in a note to clients issued just before last weekend. This is a decisive barrier for legacy car makers. Tesla's centralised, integrated, technology-driven architecture enables flexibility and over-the-air software upgradability across the entire domain. Well, in contrast, those traditional architectures implement technology uh, additively to the legacy infrastructure, they say. Uh, So a big vote of confidence for the way that Tesla goes about business. You've heard me say this before. They're a software company first that happens to make computers with batteries attached that have four wheels and motors. I, I think of Tesla as a technology company that makes very clever bits of things that help move people around rather than what you think of when you say a car maker. Well, two more stories today, and you may know about CATL, Contemporary Amperex Technology Limited. Uh, but for any newcomers to the podcast, we'll try and keep things as I try and balance this out, by the way. For people who know exactly what we're talking about, who, who, who email me to say, get more in depth than people who say, oh, I had one yesterday, actually. I've just found your channel on YouTube. And you think, oh, my goodness, you know, I want to try and explain everything for every type of listener. So, CATL uh, made their market debut in Shenzhen yesterday. China, they are China's largest lithium battery maker. And on their debut, their shares soared by 44%. That's the maximum allowed for any newly listed stocks on their first day of trading, according to Nikkei.com. CATL shares, which were listed on the tech-focused index of the Shenzhen Stock Exchange, uh, reached 36.21 apiece, uh, giving the seven-year-old company a valuation of 12.2 billion US dollars. It makes it the second largest company by market capitalization on Chinext, uh, which is the market that's listed uh, listed on with investors bullish on any industry to do with electric vehicles. So on their very first day of trading, the company went up 44 percent as a as a public company listed uh, with their shares listed at least in China. That is just such a vote of confidence in electric cars. And again, I often say this isn't a, a money podcast, an economist podcast, all those kind of things. So I don't pretend to understand any more than what I just told you. But that is 
just such a big bit of positive news for that, uh, a massive battery maker. Well, finally, Mercedes has showed off footage of its prototype EQA, uh, the compact EV that's part of the next-gen EQ electric cars. It first unveiled the A-class-sized electric car at the Frankfurt Auto Show last year, uh, but it now has a working prototype, according to Engadget. Great article about this from Engadget. Expected to have a 60-kilowatt-hour battery pack, which is 200 to 250 miles real-world range, and electric drivetrain to propel it from north to 60 in five seconds well the dc fast charging system uh, gives you 60 miles or so in just 10 minutes and all three of the eq range currently match up with tesla when you think about it the eqa equivalent to the a class maybe you could say the model 3 the eqs equivalent to maybe the model s and the eqc well that matches up to the Tesla Model X. Now, Mercedes haven't re revealed anything like pricing. Of course, it is just a prototype stage. Oh, but we do love a prototype. We do love a concept, but this has moved on. This is now prototype stage. They've got one, and it looks so cool. Really great lines. Love the different colours and the accenting and the blue, which you often see in electric cars as well. And let's just hope that when it finally makes its way to market, as much of the prototype is maintained as possible, because it looks brilliant. Well, thank you so much for listening to the show today. If you can help me spread the word, please do, about electric cars and share this with somebody who might be interested. If you want, every previous podcast is on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, SoundCloud and the blog at evnewsdaily.com. And it's now pretty much a once a week regular comment I get on YouTube going, why do you put audio on YouTube? Where's the pictures? <sighs> this is a podcast. It was always designed as a podcast, we put it on YouTube as a nice little bonus, an extra, if you like. It was never meant to be on YouTube, but some people, a lot of people, it turns out, like audio on YouTube only. But there was never meant to be pictures with this. It's intentional. Uh, if it would, uh, if you mean a lot, by the way, if you had two minutes to rate and review, and if you want to catch up on the social, search EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you tomorrow.